All right, here we go with the second part of rational expressions. And once again, this is important because we're going to be dealing with trig, trig equations. So we need a little practice here. So let's see what we got here. Rational expressions. We want to be able to add and subtract them, finding a least common denominator. We need to deal with complex rational expressions. Okay, those are the two things we're going to cover here. So finding the least common denominator, LCD, we're going to factor each denominator, then list the factors of the first denominator, and then add to the list any factors in the second denominator that are not in the first. Okay. Then the denominator will be the product of the list. Okay, so here's our example. Find the LCD, least common denominator, of these two fractions. We're not going to do anything more than just find the LCD. So if we factor the first, we get 5x times x plus 3. If we factor the second, we get x plus 3 times x plus 3. That's a perfect square. So our first two elements will be 5x times x plus 3, first two factors. We already have an x plus 3 taken up, but now we have another x plus 3, so we have to write that one down too. So this is what our least common denominator will be. So go ahead and do your checkpoint number 7. Next, we want to add and subtract rational expressions with different denominators. Okay, different denominators. We're going to find the LCD and then determine the restrictions. Going to multiply each numerator by what is missing, and then we're going to add or subtract the numerators. Now, this I'm saying by what is missing, and I'm, I think you'll get the idea once we do the next example. And if possible, simplify. All right, so that's what our steps are. So here's our example number eight x plus three over x squared plus x minus two plus. 2 over x squared minus 1 equals x plus 3. Well, the, it, the equals because what we're going to do is um, we have x plus 3 in the numerator and we're going to factor our denominator, which is x plus 2 times x minus 1. And then the second is going to be 2 over x plus 1 times x minus 1. So you see all the factors that we have in the two denominators. We have an x plus 2. We have an x minus 1. And we can forget about the second x minus 1 because we already have it in the first denominator. But then we have another x plus 1. So our denominator will be x plus 1 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. And we might as well go ahead right now and say, well, we can do our restrictions. x cannot be negative 2, 1, or negative 1. Okay, so now we have x plus 3 for our first numerator. And we already have x plus 2 and x minus 1 in the denominator. We are missing x plus 1. So we're going to multiply x plus 3 times what is missing, which is x plus 1. Then we also have our plus 2 for our second, our second numerator. And we already have x minus 1 times x plus 1. We are missing x plus 2. So we're going to multiply that numerator times x plus 2. Now when we go ahead and do our multiplication, our x plus 3 times x plus 1 gives us x squared plus 4x plus 3 plus 2x plus 4 all over our denominator x plus 2, x minus 1, x plus 1. So uh, I have x squared, now I have a 4x plus 2x gives me 6x. I have a 3 plus 4 gives me 7 and I put it over what my denominator is. Now I have to pay attention a little bit to the numerator. I can't do anything to the numerator. I can't factor it because it is prime. It does not factor into integer factors. So I'm done with that. So go ahead now and do your checkpoint number eight. Complex rational expressions, uh, also known as rational fractions. And that's a fraction in the numerator, in the denominator, or both. So I can have 1 plus 1 over x over 
1 minus 1 over x. And let's see what we need to do with this. Well, let's look at the numerator. Our common denominator of the numerator is x. So I change the 1 to x over x. So I have x over x plus 1 over x, which gives me x plus 1 over x. In the denominator, I still have the same common denominator of x. So I change my 1 to x over x, and I have minus 1 over x gives me x minus 1 over x. Now, my de denominators, the denominator of numerator and the denominator of denominator are the same, so they cancel out, which gives me x plus 1 over x minus 1. Also remember, going back to our original equation, x cannot be 0 and x cannot be 1 can't be 0 because in the denominator you have 1 over x. 1 over 0 would not be defined. And if x was 1, we'd have 1 minus 1 equals 0, and that would be, not be defined. So go ahead and do your checkpoint 9. Example 10. We have 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x, the whole thing over h. So we're going to deal with the numerator first. The denominator of the numerator is going to be x times x plus h. And I have to do my multiplying. Um, 1 times x is x. And negative 1 times x plus h. And the whole thing over h. So I can um, deal with my numerator again. I'll have x minus x plus h. The x's cancel out over x times x plus h. And, of course, the whole thing's over h. This is going to give me x minus x minus h is minus h over x times x plus h. And then when I flip the uh, denominator over to make it multiplication instead of division, I have 1 over h. So my h is canceled to negative 1, and I have negative 1 over x times x plus h times h. And once again, where are our, our restrictions? x cannot be 0, x cannot be uh, negative h, and h cannot be 0. That's a little bit tougher. Got to look at that a little closer. Okay? So go ahead and do your checkpoint number 10. And we're done. And um, see you guys in class. Bye.